Yeah. Before I get like 8 million comments about this, I am running iOS 13.3, so it has that Deep Fusion update, and I am running Android 10 with its latest December patch. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the biggest difference between these two phones in low light. White balance. Look at how much cooler the Pixel 4 runs and how much warmer the iPhone 11 Pro is. In terms of photo quality, both do amazingly well. At 100% crop, you can see how the iPhone runs so warm you can barely pick out the blue and green lights on this water tree or whatever it is. But both provide similar photo quality and both offer an excellent shot. For me, this comes down to personal preference and the Pixel 4 gets my vote here. So let's keep this conversation going on about white balance. The Pixel 4 runs so cool here, you have certain areas all over this photo where it looks like a car is hitting the building with HID headlights, but it's not. The iPhone 11 Pro looks more realistic overall, and at 100% crop, both provide great detail while the Pixel 4 offers a tad more clarity. But when we pan over to the right, you'll see a bit more overexposed lighting on the Pixel 4, as well as a lot of smoothing going on to eliminate background noise, but at the cost of detail in this shot. I'm going with the iPhone 11 Pro on this one. So here we are again with the Pixel 4 with its cooler tones and the 11 Pro running warm, but in this instance, the iPhone 11 Pro is more aesthetically pleasing to me. I just feel like it gives off this more realistic vibe than what the Pixel 4 is offering. This again is personal preference, but I'm giving this shot to the 11 Pro. And I will say, this is a running theme. Again, the Pixel 4 here leans on a bluish, whitish tint, but in this particular set, it's way too cool for my liking. The iPhone 11 Pro looks more realistic, even though a tad darker in exposure, but really comes off as the better balanced shot. Now, it's funny how the Pixel 4 has been running cooler, bluer tones, but here we are in this area with lights everywhere. But the iPhone 11 Pro really picked up on the blue overhead lighting and ran with it way too much. At 100% crop, you can see how the iPhone 11 Pro overexposes ever so slightly, but manages to keep its detail throughout the entire shot. Still, I give it to the Pixel 4. All right, again, I hate posing for this shit, but I have no other subjects to test, so it is what it is. The Pixel 4 here is a bit too aggressive with night sight. You can see the plant behind me is overexposed and my skin tone just isn't right. The iPhone 11 Pro is more realistic here and gets my vote. I hate posing. Okay, so let's go through this real quick. Again, night sight on the Pixel 4 is just a tad too much. This whole left side of the pic is too bright. The iPhone 11 Pro not only balances is better exposure wise, but it seems to add a bit better clarity as well. So let's quickly run through these last set of shots. I'm going with the 11 Pro here for again, it's better lighting. The Pixel 4 tends to just overexpose a step or two too much. This set I'll give to personal preference. Both do a great job here, but again, you'll see the Pixel 4 just a tad too high in exposure, at least for my liking. And in this last set, even though both look almost identical, especially in terms of color temperature and quality, I'll give it to the Pixel 4 for not blowing out the storefront lighting over here. Conclusion? They're both great shooters at night. They're the best phones I've ever used for night shooting. And I won't say either is perfect. I know some stuff is subjective, you know, personal preference, but I think when it comes to lighting and exposure, the iPhone 11 Pro handles it a lot more consistently than the Pixel 4. Now, if there's one thing that I could add to my wish list, it would be that the Pixel 4 could have night sight turn on automatically instead of having to specifically choose it. And I say that because I think there are times when I think it's too dark, so I'll turn on night sight, but it really isn't that dark, and then it just overexposes or blows everything out. At least on the 11 Pro, it automatically decides whether or not the scene calls for night mode. Obviously, this is a case-by-case -case basis, and I know not everybody wants to have an automatic setting for night sight or night mode or whatever, but I guess when I'm speaking in terms of most people, someone like me especially who just wants to point and shoot with a camera phone, you know, I would say the only time that I ever use manual controls or mess around with it is when I'm using my DSLR. Otherwise, on my iPhone or on my Pixel, it's always automatic. If you like this video and you'd like to see more videos like these, 
please consider supporting me on Patreon. Your support will help me keep making daily videos. It'll help me buy phones so that I can keep continue doing these camera comparisons. And for just a dollar a month, it'll get your name at the end credits of every single one of my videos. You'll get full access to my behind the scenes posts on Patreon. And for $3 a month, you'll get high quality phone Jerome stickers. You can slap this shit on anything. Plus you'll get all the $1 perks. Anything more will get you entered in various giveaways I have planned and more. I've left the link to my Patreon in the description or you can go to patreon.com slash Jerome Ortega. With that being said, I'd like to thank Sean for upgrading to Terminator status on my Patreon. Thank you so much for the added support. Finally, check me out on Instagram at phone Jerome where I post daily. Twitter at phone Jerome where you guys really need to kick my ass about posting more. And that's it. Roll credits. Mm -hmm.